Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John, and today we're going to continue the refactoring of our Proxmox collection. We've been using it to build our Fedora VM project. Let's get started. In VS Code, I've brought up the Create VM role. I'd like to replace these hard-coded values and allow the role to be more flexible. I've gone ahead and written up an argument specs file. I had done this on camera, but after looking at the footage, I realized it takes way too long, and we're going to go over most of these properties during the refactor anyway, so I don't think much is lost by not covering the documentation of the argument specs file. So we're going to start out with two topple properties here, the create VM API and the create VM values. This is effectively just our Proxmox API that we've been using to do the Proxmox API values. The create VM values is simply everything we're going to use to create this VM with the Proxmox KVM module and the Proxmox disk module. So let's go ahead and see about adding some of these default values. So we're going to do this the same way we did in the git config template. We'll create a create VM values defaults in our vars section, and then we'll merge that with these vars passed in by the user to create a final vars dictionary that will pass to our roles. So let's go ahead and add our default values in vars. So let's go ahead and split this off to the right. And let's look for default values we might need to add. So we're going to copy this as our toggle dictionary. And then balloon has a default value. It's zero, so we'll add that in there. Caught init has a lot of default values, so let's go ahead and add those. I see the user property, which defaults to Ansible, so let's copy that over there. The password has a default as well. It's secret password. Don't tell anyone that. It's a secret. SH keys, um, the value for default is just not having a value, so we'll put by that as the tilde operator. The default storage is going to be the local storage, and uh, this actually should be format, not storage format, so let's go ahead and fix that. So the format is going to be QCO2. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. Next we have the CPU cores, which I'm going to say defaults to 1. The CPU type is going to default to host CPU, in other words, whatever's in your Proxmox server. We've got uh, several defaults inside the disk role, so let's go ahead and add that in there. So under here we have the discard option, which enables us to do SSD trim. That's going to just default to on, and make sure to quote that to get the literal value on and not the boolean true on that YAML uses. I really hate that feature, but whatever. Uh, format again is QCO2, so we'll just copy that from above. We've got some image properties, so we'll put that in there. Underneath the image, we have a file which does not have a default. But the storage does have a default, and that is local. And then the VMID is our hack to be able to place these files in a location that Proxmox will have access to, but it won't touch. So that is what we're using that for. Uh, IO threads is going to default to 1. In other words, we want to use IO threads. Size will default to 8 gigs, so we'll go ahead and say 8 for that. Over on SSD, we're going to say SSD by default. If you don't have SSD, you'll want to disable that, but I think most people will. And then again, our storage is going to default to local for our disk. Okay, uh, memory is going to default to 2 gigs or 2048 megs. Uh, there's no default name property, but I think all of the network properties have defaults. So the IP configuration uh, defaults to DHCP. So that just means IP equals DHCP. The model is the model of card for our NIC. We're going to use vert IO. Not really sure when you use anything else, but I guess you could if you wanted to. 
Uh, bridge will default to VM bridge zero. That's the default for Proxmox, though there are other options. Firewall will disable for this. I don't usually use the built-in Proxmox firewall. Maybe some people do. I don't know. Uh, the MTU will set to one to match the underlying bridge MTU. Uh, there is no default node. I would have no idea what you call your Proxmox node, so not really a default there. And then on boot defaults to false, so we won't enable our VMs to boot when Proxmox starts up. Okay, there's all of our default values. Let's see about applying them over in our role. So let's go back to our role and let's just start changing things. So there are eight instances of this Proxmox API, which is now create VM API. Okay, down at the bottom, uh, we're gonna use uh, the values array. So we're gonna need to quote this. So it'll be values. And then we're gonna have the disk property. And I think it's gonna be size under that. So yeah, that looks right. Values disk size, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and make the rest of the disk property with the values array, so or values dictionary. So where is the disk? That's right in here. Uh, I think this line is already too long, so let's split it up into a multi-line string. Uh, we'll start splitting it on the commas to start with. Uh, let's go ahead and add the disk car SSD. Okay, that's a good start. So. Um, this is the storage we're putting on here. So let's go ahead and add that. And we'll comment or we'll copy paste this. So this is the storage location of our disk. Uh, importing from, this is the image property. So this is gonna be disk image storage. I think a lot of these are the ones on this line will all be disk image stuff. So over here, this is gonna be the VM ID. And finally, we're gonna have the disk image file. And I want to save this disk image. So let's cut this and we'll place it somewhere in a comment for use later on. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and copy this. Let's change this. This should be the format. This should be IO thread. Discard should be discard. And if you thought SSD with SSD, you'd be right. Okay, that looks good for our disk properties. Let's go ahead and edit a few more things. Why don't we do the network section next? So again, let's go ahead and quote this and we'll turn that into a multi-line string as well. We'll make it a bit easier to read, put that uh, there. Okay, this is gonna be values network, and then the property is model. Let's copy that, and we'll use the bridge. So we'll copy bridge over there, and firewall and MTU. Okay, that all looks pretty good. So what's next? Um, Oh, this one is also a network property. So let's quote that, and this should be IP config. Okay, um, yeah, let's do the cloud and net stuff next. So again, let's make this a multi-line string. Uh, this is going to be cloud underscore init. It's gonna be uh, storage, and then we'll copy this over here and give it the disk format, so CloudInit format. I think that all looks good for that stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and fix this. Here's our CloudInit password. Okay, and then our CloudInit user. This needs to be quoted. Uh, there's one more CloudInit thing. It's our SSH keys that goes here. So again, I need to quote this, and this should be SH keys. This I need to preserve so we can copy it later. Okay, that looks good for CloudInit properties. The rest of them should be all 
uh, first level keys under create VM. So this is gonna be, gonna be values name. Okay, let's copy this entire property. Most is gonna be raw strings. So uh, over here, we're gonna give it the balloon property. Uh, cores is CPU cores. And then host is CPU type. Uh, memory is memory. What's missing? This we're going to keep hard code. This is actually going to be a, a node, not a Proxmox node. This we're going to keep hard coded. So is this and this. Okay, let me quickly check over if there's anything I missed. I'm not seeing anything, so I'm hoping uh, I didn't miss anything or typo anything. But I guess we'll find out. Let's uh, split this string a little bit so it's easier to read to. We'll put a new line there and a new line there. Okay, that's slightly easier to read, I guess. Um, so now all we need to do is A, make this values object because we don't have that yet. And we were doing that in the git config right under the var section. Uh, but there's a slight problem with doing it that way in that we have this task and this task. And this values, or, or if I put vars up here, it won't be down here. So instead, I think we should set a fact and do it that way. So let's go ahead and say, register values and we'll do set fact and that will be our fact but it won't be quite like this we're going to use um what do i want here i want cloud vm sorry create create vm values defaults and then we're going to do the exact same thing in here but get rid of the default section so just like in git config uh, values is going to be the combination of our defaults with our values. And by placing the combine um, for values, it's going to override what's in our defaults. And we are doing recursive equals true to make sure we specify everything to be merged recursively in all of our subfields. So that looks good for our values. Only thing left is to actually supply our values in our playbook. Let's go place these down here in our playbook. And let's go ahead and fix our variables here. So first of all, uh, we can pass the create VM API rather than proxmox API. And then we're gonna give um, create VM values. And then node will be PVE. Now all I have to do is figure out every other value that was hard coded that I didn't copy over here. That's going to be fun. Um, let's see here. The name is going to be proxy ATH local no plaza dot net. Uh, CPU cores is four. Um, memory, I think I put that at four gigs. What else do we have in here? Uh, the disk property, uh, the size of that is 32. Uh, for the image, the file is this file right here. So let's cut that and copy that over. And then the image file is actually not in the local storage. I put that in my NAS storage. So the storage for me is NAS. But uh, normally, you know, it might be somewhere else for you. Uh, but there actually is a, a bit of a problem when you don't specify this or specify the wrong place because uh, the module kind of fails in weird ways. Um, that is a little bit hard to debug. So We'll need to do some validation for this. I'm not gonna do that now, but we will come back to this in the future. Okay, uh, let's see here. What about the cloud init properties? Uh, we obviously have SH keys, so why don't we do that? So need to give it this key. Here's our VS Code public key. So let's put that under there. And I'm wondering what else I am forgetting. So let me go do a quick check and see what else might be needed to be supplied. So we supplied the name property. Uh, balloon is disabled by default, that's fine. 
we specified um, we're keeping the default uh, password and username for the CI user. We could change that, but I'm not going to do that. Specify CPU cores, type as host is fine for the default. Uh, the cloud init stuff is fine for the default. Um, IP config being DHCP is fine. Memory we specified. Network, I'm good with all the defaults there, being the vert IO and no firewall and yada yada. Uh, the no we specified, that's hard coded. Uh, what's here? Um, I do want the disk to be on my local storage. I just stored the disk image on my NAS, but my NAS is slower than my local storage. I want to use local storage for my actual disk image. Uh, import from being storage, zero is fine for this. Specify the file. Format being uh, QCO2 is fine. IO thread, disk crusty being enabled is fine for the default. Yeah, I don't see anything else here need to be specified. Um, specify disk size. So yeah, everything I think should be okay. So assuming I did specify the disk size, which, uh, where am I at? Yeah, I did. So unless I made a typo changing one of these things, uh, this should be good. So let's go see what happens. If I run Ansible Playbook with Sysange Quick Tutorial Create PVE Host, does it actually work? No, it does not. Okay, well, you know, first try, well, that was somewhat to be expected. So it is uh, missing some arguments. Um, let's see here. It took me quite a while to figure out what it was talking about with missing arguments. I'm like, I've got the name, I've got the disk file, what are you saying is missing? And nothing. I didn't forget to supply anything. And there's nothing wrong with the argument specs file either. But maybe you noticed when I made the vars file that I called this dictionary create VM values, not create VM values defaults. And roll vars have a much higher precedence. So they were overriding everything I was passing in. And we don't have defaults for the name, the node, and the disk file. The exact three things it was saying are required. So eventually it made sense when I started commenting things out to figure out where the problem was. So why don't we go ahead and try to go back to the terminal and let's run this playbook one more time and see if it works this time. Because it still could fail. Oh good, it didn't though. So yes, uh, it said it's okay. However, there's one minor problem. Uh, if it already saw this host existed, it might not have changed anything. So I think the best course of action is to create an entirely new VM to make sure that this part actually works. Now that we can change our values, it becomes pretty easy. Let's call this proxy 99. And let's see if it works when we run it with a non-existing host. Hey, no errors, looking very promising. Let's go into a browser and see what it looks like in Fox and uh, Proxmox. Okay, over here we've got our original host and then we've got Proxy 99. If I take a look at the hardware, it's got four gigs, there's four cores there, Vario SCSI single, this is in local, so is this, disk size, 32 gigs, uh, this is all the defaults, that looks good. CloudNet has Ansible and a password, uh, VS Code thing, it all looks very good. Let's go ahead and start it up and see if it looks like a Fedora machine. It definitely looks like a Fedora machine. Yeah, I would say everything worked out very well. Once we get a prompt, maybe we'll try it logging in and see if all of our parameters look okay. Uh, the key looked fine, but I'm thinking, I don't know if the password was okay. So hard to tell there, but I'm pretty sure it was good. Let's go grab that password. Okay, I think CloudInit is done running now, so we're going to use the Ansible user, and it's 
secret password bang. Yeah, that works. Got an IP address. We can ping Google. Yeah, this all looks good. That looks like a successful refactor to me. And the role is much more reusable than it was before. That looks like a good point to wrap up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. I appreciate it and it helps out the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.